What is going on, everyone? Chris Vajernos, Comics and Pop Culture, and we are talking about some breaking news from CGC that came about. Uh, they are raising their prices. They are raising their prices, and I'm, we're going to be looking at what they said in their public statement, and we're going to be talking about the uh, reaction to uh, customers and to collectors and how we're feeling right now, and I'm going to read you guys my take on how I feel this decision is. Is it a good decision? Is it a bad decision? Is it not so black and white? We're going to dive into this. Before we start discussing the topic, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take the time to do so. Check out all the awesome links below. Uh, but let's get into this. So CGC, this is their uh, official Facebook page. This is the post that they made, and we're going to read what they wrote. Quote, as the collectibles market has seen immense growth recently, CGC has also been growing to meet the increased demand for our services. We have expanded into a second location, hired over 70 people, upgraded our grading equipment, and more all within a very short amount of time. With the recent and ongoing growth of the company, we have determined it necessary to reasonably increase our fees to allow us to continue to grow and best serve the collectibles community. To advance our current and future efforts, CGC is updating its membership tiers, services, and fees effective April 28th, 2021. Submission forms completed before April 28th, 2021 must be delivered to CGC's facility by May 28th, 2021 to qualify for the old pricing. To get full details, check out their website. So, uh, this is, I'm not going to go into comments cause I'm not going to get, put anybody's personal information out there, uh, in this video. So, okay. So, I mean, they're straightforward. Uh, they're talking about how they are, uh, expanding more costs, more overhead. That's understandable. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say this positive thing. This is long overdue. Not, not the raising of the prices, the, 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 the growth of the, uh, the, the expansion, right? Uh, investing into another facility, investing into, uh, better, um, e equipment, uh, investing into hiring a, a larger staff. Those things are way overdue. I'm glad that's happening. Now I'm going to read you. So there's, I'm in all tons of Facebook groups and there's a bunch of people reacting right now. And the majority of the, the reactions are negative. I mean, there are some people that are, you know, standing in defense of CGC. Oh, you know, what, what do you expect? Um, you know, they've been the same price for however many years. Uh, you, you know, you guys are getting rich off of your slabs, but you're going to be mad that they have long, you know, turnaround times and that they're raising their prices. I think all that is here nor there. But like I said, the majority, it's an overwhelming majority of people that aren't liking this. So uh, I do feel it's not just black and white. All right. So we're going to look at this comment that I wrote replying to somebody that was obviously upset at the changes. Uh, and we'll, let's just go into it. I'm going to read along with you guys. I state, you have to look at this from two sides. One, their decision to expand was the right thing to do, as I was just talking about. And probably five plus years late, you cannot overlook the fact that overhead and fixed costs for the company will rise. But then there is number two. Yeah, that, that's a quick number one, right? Now, let, let's go into number two, because that's basically the bulk of my response. The company's growth means more profits. And I mean growth in terms of revenue in the business that they're doing. I don't mean growth when, when talking about their decision to expand. They have seen immense growth over the last few years, especially over the yet last year um, since COVID hit. That is bringing them an extreme higher uh, uh, amounts of profit. But I'm going to continue reading here. The company's growth means more profits. And since their fixed costs and overhead uh, were, were probably roughly the same over the years, it means their profit margins continue to increase. Now, a business is in business to simply maximize profits. Yes, this is true. But you can only maximize profits by supplying a product or service that the people want. So here, instead of minimizing profit margins for the short term by expanding, they decide to shift the cost of expansion onto the consumer. Why is this a bad move? 
Without knowing all the facts or details to their revenue stream, I can't lie about specifics, but I can say this with confidence. CGC, once again, isn't looking two, three, or five years ahead. They are looking at the right now and what they can put into their pockets today. This is not good business in terms of long term. I can guarantee that CGC's profit margins and net profit have increased immensely over the last year, which means they could invest some of that money, some of that profit back into expansion and still be able to see sustainable profits due to the growth of business coming in. They are refusing to see this. They are refusing to eat costs today to then see continued growth in profit long term. All right, I hope you all are following along. I give an example here. Example, about 10 plus years ago, Starbucks started closing down some of its stores that were the company's lowest producers. From there, they took a ton of capital, restructured their business model, and then remodeled all of their current stores, upgraded their machines, and started open it, opening up brand new stores. While doing this, their annual net profits were negative for the first two years or so. But after they completed their restructuring, their annual revenue and net profit began shooting through the roof and became more and the company became more profitable than ever before, which also drove their shares up on the stock market. This is a fact. Why do I bring this up? Why do I bring this up? Starbucks wasn't thinking about today. They were setting their eyes on tomorrow. They knew that if they were willing to take a minor loss today, that they would reap more than they ever did in the future. CGC could do this too. Oh, I spelt, I spelt too wrong. Sorry, guys. That's T-O-O. CGC could do this too, but their decisions are proving that they do not have this kind of vision for their company. CGC will be fine for the time being, but even Rome fell. Some of the biggest companies in history couldn't stand the test of time because they couldn't evolve or they simply didn't have the vision of longevity. The grading industry is still in its infancy. A lot will change over the next 10 years. Look for CBCS to continue to slowly gain market share. Slowly. That's why that was a capital because I'm not saying, oh, CGC is going to bottom out. No, no, no. CGC is fine for now and maybe for some good years in the future. But I'm going to continue on. This is what I said. I truly hope that CGC starts listening to consumers, understanding their customers, and starts operating with the change in culture, all right? Very important takeaways from this. CGC is refusing, and I've said this about CGC a lot over the last couple of years. CGC, in my humble opinion, and this is, again, without having all the facts. I don't have all the facts. I don't have I, I don't have their books. I don't have their financial statements. I don't have an inside look because obviously there's no transparency with CGC. There's not even a lot of transparency with CBCS, maybe slightly more. I feel that CGC is not looking to the future and that they are extremely cocky and overconfident. We're going to look at another comment I left. All right. So we're going to dive into this. And once I read this comment, I'm going to look at everything that I stated and I'm going to kind of sum it all up for you all. Quote, I'm telling you, CGC thinks they are invincible. I say this as someone who is sending books to CGC this week, who has never used another grading company, and as a businessman myself. We do know that costs of doing business continue to increase for any industry. It's only natural due to this and inflation that cost for goods and services for us as consumers is going to increase over time. But regardless of why they made the decision to raise prices at, at this time, it's pointless. But they actually, they stated, that first thing that I read, they stated their decision to raise prices. It wasn't because, um, you know, uh, their their uh, variable costs are, are rising. Uh, most likely their, their variable costs are, uh, uh, minim are, are decreasing. You know, it's looking at uh, e economies of scale you know, in, in how that works. That's what CGC has been uh, experiencing. So they were straightforward and said, we are raising our costs because, because we are expanding. All right. But let's go back to my comment. But regardless of why they made the decision to raise prices at this time, it, 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 it's pointless. It's, it's irrelevant. It's all about public perception. 
CGC in no way is going to lose their dominance anytime soon, but more people are pulling away by the day. Their quality control issues continue to become more, more common. Their inability to respond to complaints or fix any errors on their part is becoming more common and is becoming a huge burden on those customers having to go through that process and what it takes. Like if they make a mistake and you have to send a book back in for them to correct the mistake, it's a process that could take literally, you know, months up to a year. It's just, it's, it's crazy. So there's that, right? Uh, I continue on to say, uh, wait times continue to exceed estimations, and now the company with the highest prices in the industry are once again raising their prices. This is not how you run a business for long-term success, period. CGC is more concerned with looking at their current profit margins instead of being concerned with two to five years down the line. And if you want longevity in any market or industry, you need to think long-term. CGC is still an infant and they need to start evolving their business model and culture if they want to see continued long-term success. CBCS is not without error. They're not. Don't mistake my words. But the difference with CBCS is that they understand the power of public perception. They listen to their customers and they evolve in a way that allows them to grow. CBCS will continue to gain market share slowly, but surely. So again, I kind of repeated a, a, a little bit of what I said in that first a comment. I actually wrote this one first and then uh, wrote my second comment uh, or, or the first comment that I read to you all second. So again, now I know that I'm going to get, I'm going to get those that are just, you know, I, not everyone's going to watch this video. And even if they get disagree with me, they're not going to be cordial and at least understanding. There's going to be those people. I, I know you're watching and listening. You're going to be in the comments and be like, oh, you're just a cry baby. You're just a CGC hater and all that. No. Spare, spare your, your mockery, um, because that's not it. And if you think that's it, then you're just not paying attention. You can disagree with me here. And, and like I always say, I always say this, I, I welcome and I encourage respectful engagement in the comments, uh, whether you agree or disagree. But the one thing that I understand here is business. And I'm confident with my education in business and my background, with my uh, work experience in business, being a businessman, I am confident to say that I do not feel that CGC is making the right decisions. So this is what I would do. And again, I don't have all the details, but if I was an executive at CGC, I'd be sitting down at the round table or the, or the, or the executive table and looking at this like the perspective of, of that Starbucks example. CGC is so concerned with today's profits that they're not thinking years down the line. And that's why I said, I think they're, they feel like they're invincible. They feel like they are in an impenetrable market. They're not. It may look like that today, but the market is in its infancy. Look, all you need is one competitor. All you need is one. Who is that? CBCS. And yes, there is the perspective that leans towards CGC having this ha 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 I will always dominate approach because it's in the even with this even with these changes there's going to be a ton of people that send their books into Gislad that are going to say well I'm just going to bite the bullet because guess what if if I'm looking for resale value CGC is where it's at but that's why I say this is going to be a slow process this is going to be a slow process to where CBCS is going to gain market share and CBCS Labs are going to slowly increase and compete on the secondary market with CGC. And when I say slowly, it's not going to be this year. It might not even be next year. But look, three, four, five years down the line and even towards the next decade and at the ending of, the, uh, ending of this decade that we're in right now. I'm going to sit here today and I'm going to guarantee if CGC doesn't change their business model and business culture, CGC... If they are still the leader in 2030, if they're still the leader, the, their market share is going to be much smaller and the, the secondary val the value of their slabs on the secondary market, it's going to be a much smaller gap between them and CBCS, much, much smaller. And another thing that I, I foresee happening is that other competitors are going to keep evolving like PGX and look. PGX has probably a worse, you know, we talk about CGC all the time and their problems, including myself. But look, 
I made a video saying why I would never send a, a book to, to PGX. So even with CGC's problems and with their lack of transparency, I still trust them with my books more than PGX. I'm going to send them to CGC before I send them to PGX. So, but here's the thing. Companies can right their wrongs. Let me give you another example. I've been with T-Mobile for my cell phone since 2003. All right. I, I think it was like my first cell phone that I ever had. Right. Um, a brick Nokia. I went through hell with them to a point that I thought I was going to have to sue to take them to court. No lie. Uh, and this was back in like 2008, I believe. I literally thought I was going to be taking them to court for what they did. And there was an issue that lasted, I believe, two years. Right. Well, guess what? I stuck with T-Mobile because during that time, I was struggling financially and T-Mobile was cheap. But in 2013, I believe it was 2013, T-Mobile got new ownership and a new CEO came in and started changing the culture. I'm going to tell you, and in, in, since then, they bought out Metro, they bought out Sprint. T-Mobile, T-Mobile is my carrier. I will never switch to another car carrier, uh, at least with how they're running their business right now. So the point that I'm trying to make is even com companies can come from uh, their bad past. PGX has already made a lot of changes to change their culture. Now, I still don't trust sending my books to them, but I'm not saying that that public perception can't change over the next couple of years. It absolutely can. So that means that PGX can gain market share. That means that you got newcomers like EGS coming in and creating public perception towards their business and their business model that can gain market share. And although, yes, EGS is still very, very small, they have penetrated the market and people are sending their books to them. And, and again, this is a market that people thought nobody could have the success doing that. And that's with that's with EGS not even having their own custom um, cases yet, which they are doing a, a, a crowdfunding uh, for this year, I believe. And I don't know if it's gone public yet. If it has, believe me, I'll be talking about it because I want to support them to better their company. So all I'm saying is this, and I stand by my word. If I'm wrong, let's come back here nine years from now and you guys could tell me I was wrong. Journal, you were wrong. I'm still going to be doing my YouTube. You know, I'm going to be old and gray talking about comic books. Oh, it's 2030. And yes, I was wrong about CGC because they're still kicking ass, <laughs> right? <laughs> nah, but, but my point is this. I, I stand firm and really believe in it. Unless CGC changes their culture, they're not going to be what they are today five, six, seven, nine years from now, when this de when, when we enter a new decade. Mark my word. I hope, I want, I don't want CGC to fail. I want CGC to keep evolving and I want them to change their business model and their culture uh, so public perception continues to grow uh, positively instead of continues to be reduced negatively, right? Um, and although I do want CBCS to gain more healthy competition in market share. I want it to be done in a way to where CGC and CBCS and PGX and EGS and whoever comes along over the next 10 years that they can challenge each other. They can challenge each other to do better because when there's healthy competition in a market, it, challenge the, it challenges the competition to, to provide a better service, to provide a better product, and to really listen to the consumer base and the customers and say, what do I need to be a step ahead of them, of my competition? So, CGC, look, I, I, I think, I'm going to sum it up like this. I think it's bad timing, for one. I think it's bad timing and it's a bad reason for them to increase prices. Someone else commented on one of the posts saying, you know, that's like me running. Uh, he said, I run a construction company. That's like me running a, a construction company and me getting more and more jobs because my business is booming. And, you know, I simply raise the cost because I'm seeing more higher profits. It makes absolutely no sense. You do not, you do not put your um, costs 
onto the consumer like that. You eat your costs by creating larger profit margins, which CGC is doing. CGC is not hurting for profits. Their profit margins and their net profit, net profits, profit is after expenses. For those that don't know, gross profit is the money that you earn, the money that you make. But then you got it consider expenses, whether that's fixed costs, variable costs, overhead, and all that. Their, their overhead, their fixed costs and variable costs are growing, but their profits are growing at such a high rate that their profit margin and their net profit margins are growing as well. Mark my word. So there's absolutely no reason, no reason for them to increase prices at this time and use this in my book, pretty lame excuse to do so. Now I want to touch on some some deeper layers here because, you know, a, a company has the right to to increase their uh, price of their product or their service, regardless. But here's why I think this makes it even more questionable of what they're doing doing, and a lot of it is timing and other factors of issues within the company right now. First off, I use an example of 24-hour fitness to, to, to look at this as a comparison. If, twenty say, 24-hour fitness was running their gyms and they had a, a membership fee that was, you know, $24.99 or whatever like that, you know, or, or they have certain levels of fees where, you know, maybe there's, there's tiers, <laughs> which I think there are with, with gyms, but it's been a while since I was a part of a gym. Anyways, my point is this. Say each gym has a max capacity of 100 people, right? But they've been, they've been, because business has been booming, they've been letting more than 100 people in those facilities, right? Because they want more memberships. They want more memberships. And then, then they decide to open up another 24-hour fitness and decide to raise the membership fees. That's not right. That's not how you do it. When 24-hour fitness opens up another location they're not going to raise membership fees to cover you know the the new building the new facility the new employees no that's covered by the revenue that's going to be brought in at that facility right at that specific gym the same goes for cgc like i said this uh th this um uh, expansion you know to another facility and hiring more people was years overdue so what's going to cover the cost of expanding, you know, however millions of dollars it's going to cost to, to build your new uh, 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 location, to employ 70 new people, that's going to be made up by the amount of, of, of business and revenue that's being made at that specific location. But now let's look at this. Let's, let's say that they still want to raise prices, all right? I think timing is a factor here. See, like I said in one of my comments that I read, CGC's issues continue to increase. The uh, quality control issues continue to be a problem. Turnaround time continues to be a problem. Now, you could say, well, this is going to alleviate turnaround time. Okay, it could, and I hope it does, but we haven't seen that yet. So my thing is this. Profits have been booming. Profits have been probably exponentially increasing, to be quite honest. And again, I don't know the facts because I don't have the specific numbers. They have enough capital and revenue to have done this on their own. And it took the hit to fund this on their own. And if they did that, and they're able to then get both facilities up and running, get the new uh, employees working, get those uh, turnaround times back down to feasible turnaround times where customers are happy. Quality control starts getting better because you got more people working. People aren't overworked. You're training better and all that. You're putting your resources where they need to be, right? Once that happens and you stay, again, we go back to public perception. Once public perception is seeing these things work accordingly and now we're happy again and we are behind CGC and the brand that they're pushing, now you could go back and say, we need to raise our prices. And it's going to be worth it 
to pay those few extra dollars or however much it is because you're seeing, you're seeing the increase in value. And when I mean value, I don't mean uh, monetary value. I mean what you value in their service or their product. I'm not seeing an increase in value in the service that they're getting, but yet they're raising their costs. If I felt that the value was increasing, then I wouldn't mind paying an increase in cost. And remember, value is what we value in the product or the service that they're delivering us. The value in their product and service for me has been going downward. And although this may be the stepping stones to them fixing that, it hasn't come to fruition yet. Therefore, it is horrible timing to push these increases up. At the end of the day, I am not even upset at the price increases. It's their business model not changing that will be the problem. So to restructure what I just said, they can raise their prices all they want. But if their business model doesn't change, i.e. turnaround times, quality control, cus customer service, and customer support, handling issues, resolution, if those things don't change, and, and, and transparency of the grading process, which again, isn't just CGC. If those things don't change, the raising of the price isn't going to be able to be sustainable long term because I already, and I already said this many times, I already believed that their business model with the prices that they had wasn't sustainable long term. And again, don't get it twisted when I say this. When I say not sustainable, I don't mean that they're hurting and they're going to be out of business or go under like in, a, in, in next month or something like that. No, I'm talking long term term, 5, 10, 15 years from now. Because again, remember, remember, the grading industry is in its infancy and it, it is continually evolving. And while you have other competitors and other companies willing to listen to the consumer, to understand the consumer and to evolve their business model as such, CGC has yet to do that or has yet to shown that they can make that happen. If they can, with their high demand, they can absolutely, they can absolutely sustain a few more dollars increase. So with that being said, I'm going to leave it at that. I want to hear you, all of your co guys' comments in below. Is this going to deter you all from using CGC? Are you going to be more um, uh, pushed to using a competitor, whether it's CBCS or PGS or, 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 or EGS? Or are you sticking with it and you think that this is, uh, you know, perfectly fine for them to do and, and you're going to eat it and you're going to keep supporting them. I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. Again, thank you all so much for watching. Leave your thoughts below. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And until next time.